You're a vampire looking to claim the mantle of New Dracula and take over the world of Veridoran. The thing is, though, you don't know where to start. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're sharing everything we wish we knew sooner about Stunlock Studios' new online action survival game, V Rising. Let's kick this thing off with something small and simple, but equally important. V Rising doesn't have a traditional progression system. You might think your key to vampiric ascension is by cutting down everything and anything in your way, but that's actually pretty far from the truth. In V Rising, your progression is tied exclusively to your gear and the V blood units you kill. Gear determines your raw stats for things like max health, physical power, such as crit chance and damage, spell power, movement speed, and your resistances. On the other hand, depending on how many V-Blood targets you kill, you'll have access to a different selection of powers. There are a decent amount at launch, and that makes for some pretty interesting loadouts, combinations that allow you to lean into Blood, Unholy, Illusion, Chaos, or Frost Magic. This game doesn't have traditional builds, but you can customize your kit based on what sort of challenges you're about to face. Obviously, PvP is a factor you have to consider, but when push comes to shove, you're on a pretty even playing field as far as fighting fellow vampires. Bottom line, don't expect to farm XP on end, and remember to keep pushing the survival crafting aspect of the game if you hope to progress. Hunting V-Blood units is a core experience within the game. At launch, there are 37 mini-boss-style enemies scattered around the world that you'll need to hunt down and kill to unlock new crafting stations, powers, and it's all tied to your progression. There is something important for new players to understand about V-Blood units, though. You don't actually need to track them to kill them and absorb their power. Once you build the Blood Altar, you might think the only way to engage with these targets is by tracking them down, but that's simply not the case. If you run across one in the world and it's within your means to take them down, by all means, go for the kill. Tracking V-Blood units is a great way to key in on specific targets, but there's nothing stopping you from running across a V-Blood unit randomly and unlocking their powers, even if it's technically out of order. Vampires don't need water to survive, they need blood. Blood imbues them with different powers depending on what type of unit a vampire feeds on. There are six types of blood in the game. Warrior, Brute, Rogue, Scholar, Worker, and Creature. And each blood type gives you distinctly different benefits. The key to getting the most out of the blood is finding high percentage targets to feed on. The higher the percentage, the more benefits of a particular blood type you unlock. As a general overview, here's what you need to know about each blood type. Warrior Blood increases your potency in combat, increasing power and boosting your defenses. Brute Blood increases your potency in combat and gives you helpful life leech components. Creature Blood boosts your movement speed and overall survival capabilities. Rogue Blood boosts your potency in combat, specifically around critical hits. Worker Blood boosts how many resources you get from all nodes, as well as some additional benefits aimed at resource gathering. And Scholar Blood boosts your spell potency and effectiveness. Feeding on a target is a channeled ability, one that you can only activate after reducing an enemy's health about 80% of the way. This is great when trying to pick up a blood buff, but there's another way you can leverage your vampiric powers, by feeding on and instantly killing a target. While feeding, simply left click and you'll activate a bite. This kills the target, but doesn't change your blood type. This is a great way to quickly dispatch a tougher enemy and thin out the herd. You'll often run across groups of enemies, and knowing how to quickly take a target off the board is really helpful. It's subtle, but a handy trick that we found to be a big game changer in hectic fights. Since we're talking about blood, here is an interesting tip, if you could even call it that. It's really more of a PSA. When you run out of blood, you'll start losing health. This is bad, don't get me wrong, but it's not reason for panic. The only way you can die is by a direct source of damage, either from an enemy attack or sunlight damage. If you miscalculate your blood pool and are running on empty, don't lose your head. Just find the nearest source of blood, carefully feed on the target, and then use the Blood Men Vampire power to bring yourself back to full. It's useful information to know, and being that blood is a key system within the game, can truly help dictate how you approach certain situations within the world. There are a number of interesting ways to get around the world of Verderon, and one of them is by horse. You can actually find horses randomly around the world, steal them, and bring them back to your base. Something you might not know, however, is that horses all have different stats. By going up to a horse and hitting tab, you can actually see three key statistics, max speed, acceleration, and rotation speed. These are vitally important if you play on a PvP server and plan on using horses in any capacity. 
Horses are not all created equal, and having a good getaway horse could mean the difference between life and death. Equally as important is keeping your horse alive. Little did we know early on, but you actually need to keep your horse stocked up with water. The timer is generous, so pop in 15 skins of water and your four-legged friend will be good to go for a few days. But if that timer hits zero, your horse dies and you'll be on the hunt for another steed. Speaking of getting around, how about another tip to help navigate the world? Across Verderon are a network of tunnels that allow players to teleport instantly from one part of the map to another. Now you might be saying, okay, big deal, there are teleporters everywhere, but here's the kicker. These tunnels allow you to move between them when loaded with resources. That's a huge game changer when you consider traditional teleporters don't allow you to use them when carrying any resources, at least not on PvP servers. These passageways are marked on the map with a white diamond, and I should point out that not all passageways are accessible by simply running up and interacting with them. These caves are a two-way street, but sometimes passageways are high up on cliffs, which require certain powers to access, creating a one-way street type of system up until a certain point in progression. Like I said, these are a great way to move quickly across the world, especially when lugging resources around, so think carefully about your castle location and how you might want to work these passageways into your plans. Since I mentioned resources, I think it's time for a quick tip about the most effective way to gather those critical components needed for building and crafting. At its core, V-Rising is a survival game, which means efficiency should always be top of mind when out in the world. First, I want to point back to the blood types I mentioned before. If you know you're going on a big resource run, make sure you have worker's blood. This is going to increase your yield and make the general act of farming for resources that much better. On top of that, be sure to use the right tool for the right job. Certain weapons like the sword and slashers get a 25% yield increase when harvesting vegetation. The axes get the same boost when harvesting wood from trees. And if you're going after things like rocks and ore, you'll want to use a mace, which also gets increased yield. Not every weapon increases your gathering yield, but every weapon does have some sort of bonus. So pay attention, use the right tool for the right job and remember to work smarter, not harder. As you're hunting V-Blood units and building your stronghold, you'll no doubt be clearing out human encampments and ransacking towns. Keep your eyes peeled for treasure chests. These are often filled with slightly more rare loot. There's also a golden chest variant that can spawn randomly. As you'd expect, these are filled with even more valuable loot and are absolutely worth the extra effort of killing whatever enemies are standing guard. In the same vein, you'll come across thousands of boxes, barrels, chairs, and more throughout the various camps and towns in Verderon. Don't sleep on breaking these things wide open at every juncture, as each area has a general loot pool of crafting materials that can spawn inside these destructibles, sometimes even containing the more rare resources you're on the hunt for. As a side note here, as you get into the human settlements, you might notice a distinct lack of traditional chests scattered around the areas that you're farming. That's because the team designed containers in the game to actually fit the theme of each zone. So those bookshelves and dressers inside of houses don't accidentally destroy them before you open them up, just like you would a normal chest in the world. This next tip is really quite interesting. Around the world of Verderon are wandering traders. They're often patrolling the roads between major settlements, but the trouble is these traders are hostile to you, so what to do? Eventually, you'll reach a V-Blood unit called Beatrice the Tailor. By killing her, you'll gain access to Human Form, a vampire power that allows you to disguise yourself as a human, pacifying you and reducing your movement speed. In this form, you can move throughout human-occupied areas without aggroing anything, but it does have another function. When in Human Form, you can actually talk to these traders and, using silver, buy whatever they're selling. If you didn't know, holding silver in any form will actually damage you once you cross the silver resistance threshold, which is why you'll need to boost your silver resistance either through gear, potions, or a combination of the two. Certain items the traders sell aren't expensive, but their most valuable items cost a hefty sum of silver, so start stockpiling now so you can pick up some interesting items down the road. Since we're talking about roads, I want to point out something I think is pretty unique to V-Rising. Roads connect the entire world of Verderon, and they're not just there for looks. NPC patrols will use these roads to actively move around the world, wandering from encampment to encampment. Sometimes these patrols will cross paths, and when they do, and they're hostile to one another, they'll fight. Keep an eye out for random loot on the roads. This indicates a fight has occurred, and while it really isn't an issue to you, you can simply swoop in and reap the benefits. Sometimes these patrols will have simple thugs and bandits, other times, more powerful enemies and even V-Blood units will be in the mix. And as you might expect, these are often carrying better items. So it's always good to check what loot is on the road so you don't miss out on anything special. 
One core aspect of V-Rising is the ability to create your very own castle. It's a really great feature that acts as your sanctuary and resource hub. As you're building and expanding your empire, one thing to keep in mind is that each workstation has bonuses that you can activate by fulfilling some key objectives. For example, when a furnace is in a confined castle room and has the matching floor, the forged floor, the station gets a 25% boost to efficiency and 25% reduction to costs. Again, this goes back to the whole work smarter, not harder thing, and it's really important to pay attention to. We spend a good chunk of the beta watching users build castles with no rhyme or reason, and that's just not efficient. As a group that plays on a PvP server, we have to be thinking about the best ways to keep things progressing, or we risk being outpaced and killed. This is also just an important tenant for PvE players looking to make the most out of the stations that they have access to, so be sure to check the top bar of each station and rework your castle accordingly to gain access to those benefits. As a final note, certain floors may not be unlocked when you first need them. Most of these are gated behind research, which is a simple enough system to wrap your head around. You'll either find books in the world that unlock specific craftables, or you'll use paper, scrolls, or other research items to randomly unlock a craftable. Eventually, you'll get what you need, and you can truly unlock the full potential of your castle. If you find yourself getting duplicate recipe books, don't hesitate to toss them into the Devourer for a hefty chunk of the appropriate tier's research material. Since we're on the subject of floors, I want to point out one very specific and somewhat frustrating thing. Your castle heart, that thing powering your base, well, it actually counts as a floor tile, so it can prevent a floor bonus effect from activating. If you're on a PvP server, it's best to just wall off your castle heart away from everything else. Not only are you protecting it from attack, but you're preventing it from messing with your floor bonuses. At this point, it's hard to tell if this is a bug or not and may actually get resolved, but as we're making this video, it was an annoying aspect of the game we had to find a workaround for, and now you know so you don't have to deal with the same frustrations we did. Building your castle is a fun and rewarding experience, but if you're playing on a PvP server, you also need to think strategically about where you build. Eventually, through the progression system within the game, players will be able to assault your castle. There is a specific window of time on each server that castle PvP is active, but when it's on, it's on, and players won't hold back trying to take over your kingdom. One crucially important thing to remember is your base placement. Each member of a clan can place one castle heart, which means you can have a total of four castles if playing on a traditional PvP server. Use the world to your advantage. Locate places that only have one entrance or exit, and for the love of God, don't build out in the open, because you're the perfect target for attack. A good idea is to be positioned close enough that you can access resources and major thoroughfares, but far enough away that you're not visible as players are just running around the world. Tuck yourself away in a nice, slightly hidden spot and conduct your business from the shadows like a good vampire does. If you're a casual player looking to dive into a PvP server, realize that V-Rising is truly a more skills-based experience than others in the genre. Big Team Zergs really won't be a thing because clans are limited to a max of four or less, depending on your server. If you find yourself in a PvP fight, be sure to use your surroundings effectively. Line of Sight is a huge aspect of player versus player combat in this game, and you can use it both offensively and defensively to gain an edge. Bad players stay out in the open and just go toe to toe with their enemies, while good players use the world around them to exploit every advantage they can. When we get into the dog days of the game where player skills are fully developed, cover and the ability to use Line of Sight effectively are going to be huge aspects of the game. In a similar vein, don't be afraid to just run away when in a losing fight. If you're on a PvP server, any resource items that you have will be lost when killed, so knowing when to run is almost as important as knowing when to engage. Again, Cover and LOS are your friends here, as juking players can buy you enough time to transform and escape being killed. Is it honorable to run away from a fight? No, not at all, but at least you escape with your valuables, which I argue is more important. And there you have it, everything we wish we knew sooner about Stunlock Studios' brand new online action survival game, V-Rising. If this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome. We've got a number of V-Rising videos planned, so be sure to keep it right here if you're looking for more vampiric goodness in your feeds. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We've got a great community of over 20,000 members with a special section dedicated just for V-Rising, so if you're looking to join, check out the link below.
If you enjoyed the video, you already know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. Wish I Knew Sooner is one of our biggest series here at Legacy Gaming, and it takes dozens of hours to put together. So if you appreciate our work, we'd appreciate your support. Finally, if you want to help us out even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.